Okay, good. All right, so 10.73 says this. So we'll start here, 10.73. So if you have your book, the question asks, which of the following pairs of molecules are identical compounds and which are constitutional isomers? So we're trying to figure out, are these identical compounds or constitutional, constitutional isomers? Isomers. So constitutional isomers, if you want me to review that concept, what constitutional isomers are, they are compounds that are made out of the same elements, but are connected in a different way. And the way, the proper way that we say that is to say they have a different connectivity. Say, for example, let's say, for example, I had this formula here, C4H10. That is a formula for an alkane. It follows the formula CNH2N plus two. So that's a saturated um, hydrocarbon or an alkane. And if we were to come up with a structure for C4H10, we could write this. We could put CH3, CH2, 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 and CH3 like this. And that would be butane. Okay, so that's butane. We can take those exact same elements, those four carbons and those 10 hydrogens, and we could make this compound where we have CH3, CH, CH3, and we have another methyl group branched off of here like that. And so this would be two methyl propane, two methyl propane. Okay, and I told you you have to, in the videos, I would have told you that you have to know the first 10 straight chain alkanes, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. And the reason why this compound is called two methyl propane is because we find the longest carbon chain, which would be one, two, three, and then we have a methyl group on the second carbon. So those are constitutional isomers. Another example would be, and this is the real classic example that I like to use in this class, would be what if I had C2H6O? So if I had two carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen, there are in fact two ways that you can connect these atoms together. You can either have two methyl groups, okay, with an oxygen in between, and that's an ether. So this is called dimethyl ether. That's not going to be um, on the first exam, you don't have to know how to name an ether, but you have diethyl ether. And another way you could connect those atoms to has is to have a methyl and then a methylene and then a hydroxyl like this, and that's ethanol. Okay, and these are two very, very different compounds. Dimethyl ether has a very low boiling point. In fact, it's used as a propellant, things like spray paint, whereas ethanol, you know what the use is of ethanol. It's used as an additive in um, automobile gasoline. Um, it's also used in alcoholic beverages. So let's take a look at 10.73. So we'll do 10.73. And the question says, which of the following pairs of molecules are identical or constitutional isomers? So A, they have this compound, CH3, CH2, CH2, connected like this, CH2, CH3, like that. And then over here, they have CH3. Okay, so could anybody answer this for me? Are these identical compounds or constitutional isomers? Who's got an idea of what the correct answer would be for this one? Does anybody have an answer for this one? Would these be identical compounds or are they constitutional isomers? Do these two compounds have the same molecular formula? These two compounds right here, do they do they have the same molecular formula? Yes or no? Did anybody answer that? Okay. Oh, I see it was down here. So yes, they do have the same molecular formula. So both are both are C6H14, right? Both of these are made from six carbons and 14 hydrogens. So they both have the same molecular formula, but how would you name the compound on the left? Could anybody tell me how to name the compound on the left? What would the name be of that compound? I would expect you to know that for the first exam. What would the name of this guy be? Johnny says hexane. He's absolutely right. You have one, two, three, 
four, five, six carbons all connected in a row. They're all bonded to the correct number of hydrogens. And so this is hexane. That's hexane. But the longest carbon chain in the second compound only has five carbons. One, two, three, four, five, right? We have to find the longest continuous carbon chain. And so we have a substituent at carbon number two. And so it's not methyl pentane. This would be two methyl pentane because you have to provide a locant or a number for each substituent. And so two methyl pentane and hexane. And so these two compounds are not identical. These two compounds are constitutional, constitutional isomer. And that's the final answer for this one, constitutional isomers. Does that help with the definition of constitutional isomers a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, let's take a look at one more example. So this one, so this is B, and I'm going to use, or I'm going to show you how to use a bond line structure quickly. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let me just draw the complete structural formula here. So our complete condensed formula, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here we have, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons like that. Who could name that compound? that I've just drawn. Heptane? Yeah, it's heptane, absolutely. So let me draw the other compound here. Um, and some, it looks something like that. Okay, so somebody said that this molecule here is heptane. You can see that condensed formulas are a real pain in the neck to draw, right? They take a long time. If you wanted to draw the bond line structure, it is literally 10 times faster. When your pencil touches the paper, see that dot that I just made with my Apple pencil? That's carbon number one. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that's a much faster way to draw heptane. Now what about this molecule over here? If we do the same exercise, we take the longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, getting ahead of myself, six, seven. Who could tell me what the name of this compound is? Not a trick question. Heptane. Also heptane, yeah, absolutely. So this is heptane as well. And so these two are identical. So we'll put that here, we'll put identical, identical, okay? Like that. I had an email from a student who asked me a question about confirmation. So I just wanna talk about the confirmation of heptane. And if you're wondering what confirmation is, it's just the shape of the compound, okay? So if I draw this compound, heptane, I can draw that in all manner of conformations because remember, all of these bonds, I can rotate these bonds, right? I can rotate this bond, I can rotate this bond, I can rotate this bond. I'm not gonna rotate all of them at once, but if I was to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is still heptane, right? It's still heptane. In fact, you could take a model you could take a model and you could practice that and take the molecule and you can contort it in all manner of ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I could draw it literally many, many, many ways. Okay. I could draw it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is still heptane, right? For the same reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. If you don't believe me, and I'm sure you do anyway. Let me see if I could find something in my office, which is a total mess. I have a molecular model kit here, and we can build a model of heptane. So let me see here. There we go. Go to application. So I'm going to turn on my camera right now, and I'm going to take a molecular model kit. This isn't the kind of kit that we use in our labs. This is called a Feaser model kit. They're very expensive models, believe it or not. Um, but anyhow, so if I make put one, two, three, four, four, five, six, six, and seven. So I'm going to try to hold this up so you can see the whole thing, okay? But there's a reason why when you see me draw compounds on paper that I draw them in a zigzag, okay? There's a good reason for that. 
And it's mentioned in my videos. And the reason why we draw compounds, you see how it goes zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Zig There's a reason why. And the reason why is because in each one of these bonds, right? Here's a carbon hydrogen bond. Here's a carbon hydrogen bond. This is a carbon carbon bond, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. There's a reason why it does this zigzag. And the reason why it does that is because this is the way that it minimizes repulsions, okay? Electrons don't like being near each other, right? They have identical charges, negative charges. They are like, quit crowding me, bro. They wanna be as far away from each other as possible. Are these bonds rotatable? Absolutely. You see, I can rotate this bond. I can rotate this bond. But you see what happens? You have atoms getting close together when you do that. It doesn't mean it can't exist, but it's energetically unfavorable. And that's why we draw straight chain alkanes usually in this zigzag pattern like that. There's nothing wrong with not drawing it as a zigzag. It's not incorrect, okay? But the reason why we usually draw them like that is because we're trying to draw, draw the lowest energy or the most common conformation, okay? Let me show you another thing because we've also looked at alkene. So if I replace two of these carbons with a double bond, and this is also something that I mentioned in my videos, is that if I make this compound here, so now I have one, two, three. So this is three heptene. You see I have a double bond here? Okay, look, I can whee, rotate all these sigma bonds. I can rotate these all day, go grab a beer and just enjoy rotating these bonds, relaxing, turning off Netflix, just rotating these is the kind of things I do to amuse myself, okay? But look, you can't rotate the double bond. If I did, I would break my very expensive model kit. I don't wanna do that, okay? They don't pay me enough, okay? So you can't rotate a double bond. Simple as that, it doesn't rotate. And so it's locked in that shape, right? So that's why cis and trans are isomers of each other, right? They're stereoisomers. Because if I have, let's say I have a compound that's trans, right? This is trans, this is called trans 2-butene. Okay, I cannot rotate this in any way to get these two CH3 groups on the same side. Impossible. If I did that, I would break the model kit. So that is why trans 2 butene, like you're seeing here, and cis 2 butene, if I move this down here, are two very are two different compounds, right? There's constitutional isomers, but do they have the same melting points and boiling points? Absolutely not. Right? They're going to have different physical properties. All right. Let me put my models back in the box and project my screen. And we'll take a look at some other problems. Is there another problem that somebody would like me to go over? Or another concept? Hi, Mr. Dion. Hey. Um, would you be able to talk about the... Um, the uh, what, how to determine things like uh, sec and isobutyl and sure isopropyl. absolutely if it was somebody else I would say no but since it's you Johnny absolutely okay I'm kidding I'm kidding so anyhow um, <laughs> if you want to take a look at alkyl groups so alkyl groups let's just get a fresh page here and talk about alkyl groups come on grab my pencil okay. So I told you that R stands for remainder or the rest of a compound. So if I have just a simple CH3 like this, we call this a methyl group. If I have an R and I have a CH2 and a CH3 as a substituent, I call this an ethyl group. If I have an R group and I have three carbons together like this, okay, this is called a propyl group, a propyl. But you can see here that in the propyl, I have one, two, three carbons. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydrogen. So I have C3H7 in that propyl group. Okay. And in case you didn't notice, there's another way that I can rearrange three carbons and seven hydrogens. Okay. As a branch, as a substituent. And the way that I could do that is like this I can have a CH and two methyl groups branched off like this. And so this is called an isopropyl. Isopropyl. Okay. So these two R groups or these two substituents are isomers of each other. After that, we looked at butyl and butyl is where it gets complicated, right? Because there are four different types of butyl groups. We can have just a regular butyl where we have the 
four carbons coming straight off like this. We call this butyl. Sometimes we call it an n-butyl, but we'll just call it butyl for now. Okay, we can have what's called a tert butyl. And that's where we have three CH3s coming off of a carbon like this. So we call this a tert, not a tet, a tert, a tert butyl. Sometimes we call that a T-butyl. All right. Then we have two other butyl groups, like butyl, more like brutal. Yeah. Anyhow, so we have an isobutyl and a secbutyl. So let me show you what the isobutyl group is. So the isobutyl is when we have this kind of arrangement, like this. So this is isobutyl. Notice that in the tert, I put a hyphen, and in the iso, there's no hyphen. And the last one is the secbutyl. So if I draw out the secbutyl, secbutyl looks like this. So we have a CH3 and then a CH2, CH3. So yes, it is a lot to remember these, but you want to know these. So let's say you had a compound like decane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have ten carbons like this. And let's say you had this group. Well, let me move it over. Let me move it here. Okay. Oops. Come on. Um, no, let me even move it over. I'll put it here. Okay, let's say you had this group here. Okay, so you've got to be able to read bond line structures. And this structure that I've just drawn here, this bond line structure, I'm going to do this one time, but this is the same thing as saying CH3, CH2, CH2, CH, and then I've got a C with three methyl groups on it like this. Okay, and I've got another CH2. CH2, 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 and CH3. All right, so that's a total of, I'm just double checking myself. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how would I name this molecule? Okay, so here on the top I have the bond line structure, and on the bottom I have the condensed structure. And the way I would name that is I would say this molecule is 4 tert butyl, 4 tert butyl decane. Okay, like that. So you have to know all of these alkyl substituents and when to apply them. All right, let's take a look at question number. I want to try some of these questions here. Um, Let's see here. Let's try question 10.35 quickly. So question 10.35, it's one of the questions I have assigned. Okay, it's not really assigned to your own personal edification, but question 10.35, it says convert the following condensed formulas into structural formulas. So we're going from condensed, condensed, okay, to structural, structural, and let's do, let's also do bond line or line structures. Okay, so let's try one of them. We'll do this one. So this one has CH3, CH, and then we have a methyl group and a bracket here. And we have another methine and another methyl group in a bracket. And then CH2, CH3. So if I want to draw the structural, right, I want to convert this to a structural uh, formula. I'm going to show every single bond. So let's start here with this CH3, that methyl. So we're going to put carbon. It's got three hydrogens attached to it. Okay, next I have this carbon. It's got one hydrogen. I'll just draw it down like this. And these brackets indicate that it has a whole CH3 attached to it. So I'm going to draw the CH3 up here. Then I've got another CH. I'm going to draw that hydrogen up because it's also indicating that there's another CH3 stuck to that. And so I'm going to draw all of those out explicitly. Now I have CH2, CH3. So let's put that CH2 and CH3 like that. And if I wanted to make the bond line structure of that compound, so now if I want to make the bond line, right, I'm not going to look at the structural formula. I'm just going to look at this whole thing right here. How many carbons? You know what? Let's do it. Let's look at the let's look at the structural formula. 
What's the longest carbon chain? The longest carbon chain is this one right here. Okay. And if you're like, well, Mr. Dion, isn't this the same? Wouldn't this give me the same answer? The answer is yes, absolutely it would. Either way, you would end up with the same molecule with five carbons in a row. Let's make it simple, though. Let's just draw a straight line like that. So now I'm going to draw the bond line. Remember, when my pen touches the screen, that's carbon number one. So I've got to do one, two, three, four, five. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. And if you're like, well, Mr. Dion, could I... Could I start um, like this? Could I go one, two, three, four, five? Go for it. Okay, it doesn't matter how you start drawing that that bond line structure. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then on carbon number two, I have a CH three, and then on carbon number three, I have a CH three. Who could give me the name of this compound? Let's just park ourselves here for a second. Could anybody give me the name of this compound? Somebody says dimethyl pentane. It's, a, it's on the right track for sure. 2,3 dimethyl pentane. Absolutely, because we want to number the longest carbon chain, okay? And we want to number it in such a way that we have to give the substituents the lowest possible numbers, two and three, right? So this is going to be, like Johnny said, 2,3 dimethyl, dimethyl pentane. Let me show you a trap you could fall into. Okay, if you were to start numbering over here, one, two, three, four, five, like this, this is incorrect, so don't write it down. This would be three, four dimethyl pentane, right? But you always look for the first point of difference, and two is lower than three. And so what I have written over there is incorrect. It's so bad, I'll erase it. I don't want to leave that creepy stuff behind. All right, so there we go. So structural formulas, condensed formulas, bond line structures. Let's take a look at another question here. Um, let's see. Um, question number four. Question number 10.43. I didn't assign that one, but it asks us to distinguish between alkanes, alkanes, alkenes, okay, and alkynes. It takes all kinds to make a world. I probably made that joke in my video. But anyhow, let's compare these, okay? So an alkane, the general formula for an alkane is CH2N plus 2. An example of an alkane would be something like, if I had this molecule here, this is called pentane, right? If I have an alkene, the general formula for an alkene is CNH2N. And so you lose two hydrogens. All right, there's two hydrogens. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, but we put a double bond like this. If I had this molecule, right, I would call this one, two, three, four, five. I would call this two pentene. Okay, if I put the double bond here on the end, like this, one, two, three, four, five, I would call this a, I would call this one pentene. I see in the chat that somebody wrote. What if there is a chain of different lengths on each side? Which one is decided first for numbering? Okay, I'm not really sure what the question is asking, but you always look for the chain that is the longest. Okay, after you found the longest chain, substituents are numbered in such a way to give the first substituent the lowest possible number. Okay, and then an alkene has the general formula CnH2n minus 2. So an example of an alkyne would be something like one, two, three, four, five. So this would be two pent, pentine, like that, right? Because I have one, two, three, four, five. And I could also have this molecule, like this, one, two, three, four, five. And this is, this would be one pentine, pentine, like that. All right, somebody wants to take a look at question 10.77. Let's do it. 10.77, okay, 10.77, it says, are the following names correct or incorrect? If they're incorrect, give the correct name. So let's give it a shot, 10.77, 10 all right, this isn't one of the problems I assigned, but let's give it a shot. It says, 1,3-dimethylpentane, oh, there's a problem here. All right, so if you were to have 1,3-dimethylpentane, Okay, 
you would write it like this. And you have, let's draw the pentane first, okay? So we'll draw that. So one, two, three, four, five, okay? Then at carbon one, you're gonna put a methyl, okay? And then at carbon three, so if you numbered it this way, one, two, three, then at carbon three, you'd put another methyl group. And so I'm gonna delete that three so that I can write in my methyl group. I see a major, major problem here, right? The longest carbon chain. And so we can even put an X by this, that is incorrect, okay? And we can delete these numbers, right? I wanna name this alkane. What's the first step? I find the longest carbon chain, which is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So it's some kind of hexane. Now I need to decide, I need to decide which side do I start numbering from? Would I start numbering over here, number one on the left, or would I start over here, number one on the right? Who could tell me? Should I start with my number one in red or in blue? Which one's the correct way to number it? The one on the right, exactly, the one in blue. Because if I number it this way, one, two, three, I get a three methyl, four, five, six. If I had numbered it like this, one, two, three, four, right, I'd have a four methyl. I want to give the substituent the lowest possible number. Three methyl, right, the number three is lower than the number four. And so this is incorrect. Okay, so let me erase all that spinach. Okay, there we go. Erase all the ugliness. And so this molecule becomes, the correct name is 3-methyl, 3-methyl hexane. All right, let's take a look at, what's next? Um, this is 10.77, let's take a look at B, which is 2-ethylpropane. That's also wacky, I can tell already, 2-ethylpropane. Two two I mean, that's just crazy. First, let's draw propane, one, two, three. So there's propane. And then I put an ethyl group over here, one, two, like that. Could anybody tell me what the actual name of this molecule is, this, may, this molecule that I've just drawn? Or could somebody tell me how many carbons are in the longest chain in this molecule? Four? Yeah, four, right? Exactly. So you would number it like this. One, two, three, four. And if you're wondering, hey, Mr. Dion, I would number it like this. One, two, three, four. No problem. Either way, you end up with the same answer. Okay? You end up with, you have a methyl group here and carbon two. And so this molecule becomes two methyl, two methyl butane. Okay, that's the correct answer. Now, let me just show you, if you were to take that same molecule, so what if I, what if I copy this? Okay, so I'll do copy, and we'll do paste. Okay, so if I copy this molecule over here, let's erase these numbers carefully. And if you had numbered it like this, this would be incorrect if you had done um, one, two, three, four, like that, because then you'd have three methyl, Butane. That's incorrect because you always want to give the first substituent the lowest possible number. So that's wrong. Okay, that is wrong. Okay, and so there's our correct answer, which is 2 methyl butane. All right, in the interest of time, I'm going to take a look at 10.95. So, question 10.95. Um, question 10.95. Let me find it here. In the old book, it says name each of the following compounds. Good. So let's name each of these compounds. 10.95, we'll start with A. So we have this compound here. Two bromines on the same side, on the same face of the molecule. Okay, who could tell me what this molecule is called? If I just drew a pentagon like that, what would be the name of that molecule that I've just drawn? Not the one with the bromines, just this one that I've drawn. Cyclopentane? Yeah, it's cyclopentane, absolutely. Cyclopentane. All right, so now I have two bromines, okay? It doesn't matter if I number them this way, one, two, or if I number them this way. Either way, I get the exact same answer. 
So it's going to be a 1,2-dibromocyclopentane. But there's one other piece of information that's missing here. So if I put 1,2-dibromocyclopentane, can anybody tell me what piece of information is left out here? There's one little thing. What is, yeah, Johnny and Vanessa and Brianna, they all say cis, right? Because these two bromines are on the same face of the molecule. Remember, when you have a dash like this, it means that it's pointing down. We have a dash here also pointing down. And so this would be cis, one, two, dibromo, cyclopentane. Um, let's take a look at the next one, which is this compound. And I know you're going to nail this one much faster now. So if we have this compound, we have a six-membered ring like that, and we have two methyl groups. We have one pointing down, and we have another one pointing down like this. Who could help me out with that one? I bet you somebody could just tell me the name based off of what we just learned. Could anybody help me out with this one? Cis-1,2, so it's cis-1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane. So it's close. you got to remember to include the prefix for the number of substituents there are. So this would be cis-1,2 dimethyl, dimethyl cyclohexane. All right, and why is that? Because this molecule, if I draw a hexagon like this, this is cyclohexane. Okay, something else that I'll point out, and the reason why I left a little gap up here in between these two alkenes and alkynes is because cyclo, cycloalkenes also have that formula, CNH2N, like that, because you lose two hydrogens when you make a ring. Okay, let me prove it to you. If you compare cyclohexane, which has a formula of C6H12, to hexane, one, two, three, four, five, six. This has a formula of C6H14. And so you can see that going from here to here, you lost two hydrogens. I just put minus two hydrogens like that. But anyhow, so unsaturation, right? Where, how can unsaturation occur? It can occur with a double bond or a triple bond, but it can also occur in a ring. All right. Well, with that in mind, let's take a look at, let's do one more. Let's try this one right here, which is B. Oh, did I skip ahead to C? I guess I did. Oh, yeah, so this one was C. Now let's give B a shot. So B is in the same vein as the first one. We have a bromine pointing up over here, and we have a bromine pointing down over here. Who could give me a name for this one based off of everything that we just spoke about? Yeah, exactly. So this would be trans because the two bromines are on the opposite face of the molecule. And so this would be trans 1, 2, di, bromo, cyclo, pentane, pentane. Just like that. Wait, right. wouldn't it be a 1, 3? I was testing you. Okay, I was testing you and you got it right. So it's 1, 3. There we go, because you would number it like this, one, two, three, or you could number it like this, one, two, three. Either way, you end up with the same answer. I'll just do the last one very quickly for you. So the last one, D, we have a cyclopropane like this. Sorry, it's hard to draw some of the things with the Apple Pencil sometimes. But if we have two methyl groups, I'm not even going to write CH3. I'll just write them as a bond line structure. So this should be cis, one, two, Dimethyl, dimethyl, can clean that up, dimethyl, cyclopropane. All right, and somebody else asked for question 10.107. So let's give that one a gander. Question 10.107. It says, complete each of the following equations by supplying the missing reactant or product is indicated by the question mark. So the first one is we have two molecules of CH3, CH2, CH2, 
CH3, okay? So this is butane, okay? And then we're adding 13 oxygens. What do you get from combustion? Can anybody tell me, you don't have to balance the equation, can anybody tell me what are the molecules you get when you take a hydrocarbon and you uh, cause it to undergo combustion and oxygen? What are the two products that you end up with? Carbon dioxide is one. Yeah. So CO2 and water. Yeah, absolutely. And so all we need to do is we need to balance out this equation. I'll show you an easier way to do this, okay? Than to look at the condensed formula like this. I like to just write out the formula of butane, which is C4H10, okay? Then I'm gonna add oxygen. Okay, then I'm going to end up with carbon dioxide in water. Are you ready? I'm going to teach you how to balance a combustion reaction very easily. The key step is this. Always save oxygen for last. Okay, don't save the best for, I don't know, but save oxygen for last. Don't touch it until the very end. Okay, that's the last thing you're going to do. All right, so we're going to start with carbons over here. On the left, we have four carbons, and so we have one carbon in CO2, so that means we must have at least four moles of carbon dioxide, okay? If we look at the hydrogens, we have 10 hydrogens, and over here we have two. What times two gives me 10? Who could tell me what that is? Two times what equals 10? Well, hopefully you know that it's five, okay? So five, like that. Now, all I have to do is I have to balance out the oxygen. Nothing more. So let's tally up how much oxygen is there here? Well, here we have eight oxygen, right? Four times O2, which gives us eight. And over here we have five. So eight plus five equals a total of 13 oxygens. Oxygens, okay? Like that. Now we have O2 like this. So what times two gives me 13? Well, 13 divided by two is 6.5, okay? So I could write 13 over two like that. I could write, I could write 6.5 if I want to. Either way, if you look at this equation that I've just written the way it is, one mole of butane plus six and a half of O2 gives you four O2 plus five H2O. That is perfectly, perfectly balanced. One thing I've learned since immigrating to the United States is that in America, they don't like to leave fractions in. And so we're gonna eliminate that fraction how are we going to do that? We're going to take the whole equation and we're going to multiply it by two. And when we multiply it by two, we're going to end up with this. So I'm going to erase some of this spinach here. And when you multiply all that by two, you're going to end up with this. You're going to end up with, here we go, 2C4H10, so two butanes, plus 13 moles of oxygen gives you eight moles of CO2 and 10 moles of H2O. And that is the answer that they're looking for in the book. Okay, you can see that our coefficients work out, two and 13. Give me a thumbs up if you think you can balance a combustion reaction now. Okay, so now we're going to take this compound here and we're going to treat it with bromine and light. So sometimes instead of writing the word light, we'll put H mu, which is the same thing because the energy of light is the product of Planck's constant and frequency. And then we're going to give all the possible products. So products, what would they be? Okay, so this over here, what we just did in A, this is a combustion reaction, combustion. And now we're gonna do what's called a substitution reaction. Okay, so when I treat a hydrocarbon with bromine and light, I do a substitution reaction. What is a substitution reaction? You substitute a hydrogen for a bromine. I think the easiest way to do this kind of problem is to draw out the entire structural formula or to draw a bond line structure, but let's just do it. We have a CH and attached to that CH, we have one, two, three CH3s. Okay, so this is actually two methyl pentane, two methyl 
repenting. I have a question for you guys. How many, listen to my words very carefully, how many types of hydrogens are there in 2-methylpentane? Think about it. How many types? Distinct, distinct hydrogens. Could anybody tell me? How many types of hydrogen? Somebody put 10? Okay, well, let me show you with a model here quickly. Hey, Mr. Four. Dion? Yeah. Um, did you draw butane instead of pentane? Uh, no, I drew 2-methylpropane, two methyl, two this compound right here, okay? So this is the compound, okay? You have a CH, okay? Here's a carbon-hydrogen, and you have a CH3, CH3, and a CH3, okay? Look at this. You see how I can rotate it like this? Okay. Okay. All nine of those hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all nine of those are identical. They're all chemically equivalent. They're not the same, right? They're not the same atom, of course. That's That would be just insane, okay? But they're all chemically equivalent, right? Close your eyes. Open them. Can you tell which CH3 you're looking at? Close your eyes. Can you tell which one? No, it's magic. You can't tell. You cannot distinguish between all nine of those hydrogens, but you have one little lowly CH, okay? So the answer is two. There are two types of hydrogens in that molecule, and I can even prove it to you. Oh, you, you can? Oh, yes, I can. You just wait and see, okay? I'm going to blow your mind here. Hopefully not. Hopefully I'm just going to make you be like, yes, yes, I get it. Uh, let's see here, start broadcast. So let me share my screen. Okay, where am I? Here we go. There are two types of hydrogens in here. There's the ones in the CH3s, okay? All three, all nine of those protons are identical, or all nine of those hydrogens are identical, and then I have this guy. Let me prove it to you. Okay, so if I take this molecule and I add Br2, if I put in the hydrogen where the green one is, if I replace that with a bromine, let's see what I'll get, okay? I'll even write it in green. I'll end up with C... Ah. There we go. I'll end up with CH3, C with a BR, CH3, and CH3. So this would be 2-bromo-2-methylpropane. Methylpropane. It's longer to write out the name than to draw the compound. Let me replace one of the ones in yellow. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to write it in yellow. You won't be able to see it very well. So I'll do it in red. So then we'd have CH... CH2 with a bromine, CH3, and CH3, like that, okay? This compound would be <clears throat> 1-bromo-2-methylpropane. So this would be 1-bromo-2-methylpropane. And if you don't believe me that those are the only two possible products, this is it, these two compounds. Okay, those are the products, nothing else. And if you're like, well, Mr. Dion, what if I, <clears throat> what if I did the substitution here? Well, let me show you what you'd end up with. You'd end up with CH3, CH, CH3, CH2 with a bromine attached. This molecule and this molecule are identical. Okay, look at the longest carbon chain. One, oops. One, two, three, one, two, three, right? One bromo, two methyl, propane. Look here, same thing. One bromo, two methyl, propane. Okay? If you try the same thing, if you try to substitute here, you'll still end up with one bromo, two methyl, propane. So the answer is there is two types of hydrogens and there are two possible products. Give me a thumbs up if that helps. All right, thanks, Johnny. Let's try the last one and then we'll take a break. Then we'll talk about who's gonna meet in the lab tonight, which is cohort 
um, two, or group B, whatever I called it, I forget. So it's going to be Greg H, Matty Ivan, uh, Atsimaz Pliev, Brianna Paz, Stephanie Sanchez, uh, Vanessa Shannon, Taylor Starkey, and Ryan Wooten. So I'll see all of you in the lab at what time? 7.30? Yeah, 7.30. Um, so let's do 10.107. This is C. And the question is, we start with cyclohexane. And it says we add something. And we end up with this molecule, which would be chlorocyclohexane and HCl. OK. Could anybody tell me what should be in place of that, that there beautiful question mark? What should be there? Cl2, exactly. I'm adding chlorine. In fact, so it's Cl2. Okay. In fact, nobody stopped me, but I just realized that I made a mistake, a small mistake, not a big one, but I made a little mistake up here. Okay. Not only do you end up with these two products, but you also end up with HBr, hydrogen bromide, right? Because Br2 is two bromines attached together. Okay. You end up putting one of them on the alkene, where does the other bromine go? It combines with the hydrogen to make HBr, like that. So now it's balanced and more rapa. Okay, we don't have a lot of time. I wanted to get going because I have to do a couple things before I leave the house and you guys are probably busy too, but just before we sign off, does anybody have any other questions from the book, a quick question that we could take a look at? Okay, remember, you can always ask me a question in the lab. And I think that on, what's today? Today's the last day of August. Oy. On August 31st, um, if you guys want to, we could get together. I think I could get some time that night and we could um, take a look at it. it. says, I don't have a question from the book, but may I reiterate from earlier? Go ahead. Be faster if you unmuted your mic, Greg. Yeah, I definitely just did that. Um, so what I was asking you about, um, about which side to select from, say if you had a heptane molecule, right, with a seven chain, and then you had like, let's just say uh, chlorine as the second from the left, and then like a bromine second from the right. That's what I was asking, which one would you select first to name the molecule? Yeah, so that gets tricky. So you're saying that if you had this molecule and you had a chloro here and a bromo here. Yes. Right, like that, because it's like, well, then it's a tiebreaker. Can you guess right. what you would do? Something what, what, that I saw in the book earlier said it would be alphabetical, but I'm not 100% sure if that applies. That's absolutely all. correct, okay. because bromo, B, the letter B comes in the alphabet before chloro, and so that's the tiebreaker. So okay. this would actually be, if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so this molecule would be two bromo, six chloro, Heptane. That's the tiebreaker. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you yep. for clearing that up. It's alphabetical yeah. order. I just want to point out one more thing that you got me thinking here. To go back to Johnny's, like one of his first questions is how do we alphabetize all of these alkyl groups, methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl, butyl, terbutyl, secbutyl, and isobutyl? In my videos, I mentioned that you ignore all prefixes except iso, cyclo, and neo. And so for methyl, you would alphabetize according to the letter M. For ethyl, it would be E. For propyl, it would be P. But for isopropyl, you don't ignore that prefix. And it's the letter I. For butyl, it's B. For terbutyl, it, remember, you ignore all prefixes except isocycloaneo. So you ignore the prefix tert. So the hyphen is actually important. The same thing applies to sec because there is a hyphen. Isobutyl is not isopropyl. Um, isopentyl, which we don't cover in this class, but those are not hyphenated. And so you would use the letter I. Okay? Remember, ignore all prefixes except iso, cyclo, or neo. Another example would be, what if you had, what if you had dimethyl? How would you alphabetize that? Is it according to the letter D or the letter M? I just said, you ignore all prefixes except iso, cyclo, and neo. And so di is a prefix, and so you would use the letter M like that. All right. Well, on Thursday, why don't we get together for a while on Teams and we'll talk about Chapter 11. So if there's any questions you have from Chapter 11, 
And that's a big chapter because it covers things like Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov edition. Also, let me encourage you to continue watching the videos, which I spent a lot of time on to make sure you get all the content. But I'm always happy to answer any questions you have about chemistry. All right. Do I mean Wednesday? Yes, I mean Wednesday. All right. So let me just uh, go back to Teams here. Um, stop broadcast. Mr. Dion? Yep. So you said um, Neo. Is that, I take it.